is that there, there is that missing step between the very introductory spaces and a space which I think we've sort of mentioned here like a Randall Street Gallery type space where artists can take that next step and if there's anything uh, about what's not going right is that lack of ambition which is somewhat supported by galleries having like a back room where an artist can just do a big installation and not worry about if it's going to sell or the money because when I go into a lot of Chicago galleries I kind of don't even I mean I look at the main show but when when I'm really thinking openly I look in their back room and it's usually a clutter of little stuff junk leaned against the wall you know, you go to New York, you go into their back rooms, there's usually like some really pristine artist installation. I mean, Tony White does it to some extent in his, his little back room. But that, you know, support by the commercial end of it to let artists take chances where they don't have to think, oh my God, I didn't sell anything. That's a real uh, element, along with the lack of press, uh, that makes us a little provincial. When I think about, yeah, like ethnographic stuff, in the, in, the, in, the, in the fold of things. Um, when I think about it, you know, great, you know, places where I indulge or feel like, wow, this is a really beautiful, just in, in Dion Jackson's home, and it's a beautiful home, and I just the feeling like, oh, wow, what a beautiful Chicago home and collection, in a sense, and it was informed, you know, looking at the hats and looking at things and going, oh, yeah. She spent her, she's paid her dues in Doug Dawson's gallery <laughs> and just, you know, with the, the hats, the African hats. Um, uh, but just what gave it that Chicago, what was its Chicago-ness? Um, sort of mix of things. Um, and I don't know if I could translate that into whether or not that would create, you know, Chicago's overall sense of cosmopolitanism, if I think about other people coming from around the world and why they would come to Chicago, you know, what they come to Chicago for, and what are those areas where I think of Chicago as like, oh, you know, when going to IIT and looking at a great, you know, class roster and looking at the names, you know, some people coming for engineering, study architecture, you know, it is an architectural center, or something like that is a reason that would draw people from, from you know, outside or from around the world who then come make Chicago their home you know, it's a place of study. I don't, I don't connect that to, to an images tradition of a flirtation with, you know, ethnographic, you know, arts and, and objects as much as I would just say, what are the, what's the broader or bigger economic, you know, infrastructure of Chicago that makes it so people want to come here, you know, to pursue particular interests from, you know, throughout the country, throughout the world. So someone's noting the fact that we did the panel did not use <laughs> the word figurative, which I would just say is probably more tacit than anything else. And well, I kind of avoided it. I mean, I, I was thinking on the way over that just just the well, no, ju just yeah. Well, I mean, ju just like I, I mentioned that there was a very strong strain of conceptualism pretty early on. There were always abstract painters here, and you, you even go into collections that are mostly formed, uh, focused on the figure, whether it's very stylized figuration like in the Harry Who or out and out, you know, normal realist sort of painting figuration. There's always one or two abstract painters in there. So, I mean, there, and the, if you go to New York collections, there's a few realist paintings in amongst the, you know, more abstract expressionism. So it's, it's always, a mix of things, but you're right. I mean, the figurative impulse was very strong here, and I sort of alluded to that with Leon Golub, that <coughs> he probably couldn't have sustained himself in New York as long as he did without that really strong support system here, you know, from his Chicago uh, collectors and patrons. But. Uh, well, Historically, historically, it was definitely dominated by the, the figurative, but now it's very diverse, absolutely, since certainly maybe the late 80s. I th you know, besides being figurative, there's also a narrative impulse, I think, mm -hmm. and I think it relates to, again, the, the broader, bigger picture of Chicago, like the stockyards 
and the blues and the studs turkle and I think you know it, it's 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 a it's a town of storytellers and there's a lot of stories you know at Sinclair Lewis there's a lot of stories to be told um, and I think that that relates to the art that historically has been made here I'm trying to think of figurative painting now though like the my peers are the people of my generation I'm having trouble coming up with Davis Langlois oh yeah Okay. <laughs> One. I mean, well, Jenny Spoda, who, we, who isn't living here anymore, uh, very folk influence, but definitely figurative. I mean, mm -hmm. Okay. And those are very young artists. Yeah, and I would say actually that they that they are arrived at where they were outside of even Chicago's figurative. Yeah. Or, or Joseph Noter. I just thought of another one. It shows at Linda Warren Gallery. Right. And part of that, I think, is also that figured is moving over into photography, like a Ben Guest, who, oh, yeah. Yeah, who is using photography as essentially a painting technique to do the figure. <laughs> but that, but that's, but I think the, the 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 issue of discipline is is very interesting. Um, to, if you think about an American canon of literature. Um, and this it really hit me. I, I, an old girlfriend, she's from East Germany, and she asked me one day, she said, what's a southern writer? <laughs> and, it, and it just struck me. It's like, I ha it's, like, it's, like it's Faulkner. It's, I couldn't, it's like, well, it's, it's a very specific, but then I realized, it's like, well, I can't think of a writer without referring to the place that they're from if I were to think of, like, I mean, you know, in American literary canon, you'd pretty rapidly break it down into like, oh, it's from the West Coast, and I don't know where that is. Whereas thinking it's like, with the visual arts, is it, is it the fact that like a reduction of the kinds of iconography or codes or signifiers of place becomes so rote and cheesy that they're just to be avoided at, you know, it's like the kiss of death. So it's like, I'm from Miami, I paint palm trees and alligators or pastel colors or or, you know, so that it becomes, you know, you, you, you or, you know, abstractions claim to sort of to transcend that, right? That you could plug into or you want it to belong to something more universal, something along those lines. But it seems like it's something, you know, it's interesting to chart the problem of place along the issue of discipline in terms of what it, what it, what it yields. So, question. The question is, uh, what is the MCA's role historically in, in, in uh, representing Chicago artists as it may have waxed and waned uh, over the years, and where does it stand now in respect to relation, if, I, if that's okay? Hamza, when did I do the Jim Lutz show at the MCA? 1992? Oh, two, yeah, it was, it was... It was in the old building. Right, it's in the old building, but it was, it was before, it was yeah. in a series of them before Closed and we did uh, Kay Rosen at the time and Hollis Sigler and um, Jean Dunning, which was actually a traveling show from out of town. I, I think, I'm glad you asked this question. I was like, where, where, where's the Attack the MCA crowd here today? Um, it, we have always shown a huge number of local artists and they seem not to get recognized. I mean, I'm, I'm called upon from time to time by our press people to do statistical breakdown. And if you really do a, a pretty good statistical breakdown that's fair, we show about 30% of the time um, Chicago artists are on view at, you know, as an average. And sometimes we have almost total Chicago artists, but maybe people don't think of them as Chicago artists, like Kerry James Marshall, you know, which, or Dan Peterman, which I, I did a big show of. Um, we collect a lot of local people. They're always up in our collection, but we don't label them as such. And I think people forget about the many times we do show local people over the years. And if you look back in the very beginning, like unfortunately many of the people that were local artists didn't continue, um, or they became teachers. Like Tom Mapp, um, your University of Chicago, was in one of the very first shows at the MCA, but uh, most people don't know that, you know. So over the years, I think we've had a really stellar track record, but we always have resisted doing the Chicago Gallery. And I've 